Um, yes, so now we can proceed. Um, I invite uh, Dr. David Pierre Dominici Liao from Jagiellonian Universities uh, to present in front of us. Uh, it's just family business tracing the Tenkachi Pantia royal family between the 15th and 16th centuries. Um, please, the room is yours. So, uh, in primis, I would like to thank you, Tatiana, directly for inviting me to this uh, marvelous event. And second, uh, in few of the conclusion I'm going to uh, present today are the result of uh, the, some discussions I had with your dad. Uh, so I think it's more than right to dedicate uh, this presentation to him and his, uh, his memory. Uh, so, uh, the transitional period between the Second Empire and the Tenkashi phase represented the most delicate historical phase of the Pandya dynasty. In the 14th century, the Muslim invasion of the South, uh, guided by Malik Kafur, the general of the Sultan of Delhi, Halauddin Khalji, destabilized the politics of the southern branches of the subcontinent, already aggravated by the precarious balance of the Oysal Empire. In concomitance with this scenario, the Pandya dynasty, at its apogee of the Second Imperial phase, experienced a fatal breakdown. King Maravarman Kulashekara I was murdered by his son, the co-regent Sundara III, who started a civil war against his brother, Jatavarman Vira II. Uh, this disastrous conflict uh, escalated with the Islamic conquest of Madurai and the foundation in 1335 of an independent sultanate by Jalal uh, Adina Hassan Khan. The collapse of the Oysala Kingdom in 1346 and the rise of the Vijayanagar Empire sanctioned the end of the Pandya influence in the south. By the 14th century, the Pandyas drew back in the western regions of the Tamil land, establishing a, a political center with capital at Tenkashi. As it became common practice during the Second Imperial phase, especially during the reign of Maravarman Kulashekara, a distinctive feature of the later Pandya reign are the several cases of co-regency, with few kings or princes ruling at the same time or with more or less short intervals. Uh, the period covering the 15th and the 16th century, as testified by inscriptional evidence studied in the past by Gopinata Rao, is characterized by the presence of nine kings at the Tenkashi court. Arikesari, Alakamperuma Kulasekara, uh, Srivallava, uh, Arikeshvaradeva, Jatilavarman Parakrama Kulashekara, uh, Alagamperuma Parakrama, Parakrama Pandya, Jatilavarman Srivallava, and Jatilavarman Parakrama Virapon in Perumal. Uh, comparing the reigning dates, uh, it is evident that we are in front of a period marked by few cases of co-regency and overlapping. In his re uh, research on this particular uh, historical period, uh, Gopinata Rao has often misunderstood the family relations of these rulers due to the several cases of homonymy and similarity of the regal natal stars or nakshatras. This presentation attempts at re-examining the available evidence and at reconsidering the relations between the royal members of the Tenkashi court. In the Mulestaneshwara temple in Sambu, uh, Sambuvarta Karai, a Tamil inscription dated to the 11th year of Alagam Perumal Parakrama is engraved in the mandapa of the Aman Shrine. The record registers a case of land donation to the Sri Vaishnava community of Vindanur by the king's younger brother, Parakrama Pandya. According to Gopinata Rao, Alakam Perumal Parakrama, born in Navikta Nakshatram, and Parakrama Pandya, born in the Tiru, uh, Tiruvadirai Asterism, mentioned in this royal uh, donation, were the two sons of King Alagam Perumal Kulashekara, who was the brother of Arike Sarideva. A further evidence ignored by the scholarship allows to locate a son of Alagam Perumal Parakrama. An inscription in the Madhyastanata uh, temple in, in Daru Kapurama, dated to 1482 in the eighth regnal year of Alagam Perumal Parakrama, registered gifts of land for reciting the Vedas by Prince Srivallava, the king's own son. 
given the date of the record, 1482, and comparing it to the reign years of Alagam Perum al Parakrama, we can reasonably suppose that the royal prince Sri Vallabha was the son of Alagam Perum al Parakrama and grandson of Alagam Perum al Kurashekara, as you can see exemplified in the uh, genealogical uh, tree. Uh, another Tamil record in the same temple is engraved on the south wall of the Mahamandapa and dated to the fifth year of reign of King Jatilavarman Sri Vallabha, born in Tiruvadira in Akshatra. The document records the granting of Anagrahara in Vindanur to uh, two Brahmins. The document specif specifically states that the king's maternal uncle or Mamati in the uh, Tirunel Valley variant was a certain Arikesari Deva. Other two Tamil records in the Mulastaneshvara temple on the north wall uh, facing the west in the great yard register a land granting to the settlement in Vindanur. These documents are both dated to the 17th year of King Jatilavarman Parakrava, Parakrama Virapon in Perumal, born in a vita asterism, as the uh, inscription of Jatilavarman Sri Vallabha, mentioned the same Arikesari as the maternal uncle of the ruler is granting to the village, followed by those of his under uncles, Sri Vallabha and Arikeshvara. Taking into consideration these evidences, namely the two kings, Alagam Perumal Parakrama and Parakrama Pandya being sons of Alagam Perumal Kulashekara, and both Jyotilavarman Sri Vallabha and King Parakrama Virapon in Perumal, calling in their Mulastaneshvara records Arikesari, Sri Vallabha and Arikeshvara, their Mamatis, we can easily conclude what follows. And of course, uh, Arikesari, Alagam Perumal Kulashekara, Sri Vallabha, and Arikeshvara were brothers. Alagam Perumal Parakrama and Parakrama, being brothers, were the sons of Alagam Perumal Kulashekara. And calling Arikesari, Sri Vallabha, and Arikeshvara their maternal uncles, the brothers uh, Sri Vallabha and Jatilavarman Parakrama Virapon in Perumal were the sons of the four rulers' sister, completely unidentified. And of course, Alagam Perumal Parakrama, Parakrama Pandya, Jatilavarma, Sri Vallabha, and Virapon in Perumal were, of course, uh, cousins. Uh, as it appears from the partial genealogical tables, Ari Kessari, brother of Alagam Perumal Kulashekar, Sri Vallabha, and the other, was the principal sovereign and builder of the Kashi Vishwanathal Temple in Tenkashi. After his demise on 24th December 1463, the Pandya throne passed to Arikesari's two younger brothers. The historical evidence suggests anyway the presence of a son of Arikesari Parakrama, who in all probability was not involved in the dynastic succession. An unpublished record dated to 1463 registers a gift of land to the Brahmin community of the Virapandya Chaturvedi Mangalama, a Vedic settlement founded in the name of Prince Sundaravira. Another inscription, always in public, unpublished, dated to 1462, belongs to the reign, uh, uh, strange because here in the description they say to the reign, of Shembaga Sundaravira Pandya. Uh, Alagam Perumal Kulashekara, 1430-1477, ruled as the principal king together with his brother Arikeshvara as a co-regent. The date of his royal anointment in 1430 is deduced thanks to an inscription in the Nelayapar complex dated to the 44th regnal year, so 1473, which also registered uh, the king's name as Tribhuvana Chakravarti Kalashri Kulashekara Devar. His royal birudas has testified to by an inscription in Tenkashi, which anyway states that Kulashekara completed the building of the Gopura in the Kashi Vishwanatha temple started, started by his Annaldi or elder brother, Arikesari, in 1457. Another record dated to 1473 registers several additions to the temple complex erected by Arikesari as the hall called Olaka Mandapa or Kulashekara Mandapa. The last date of reign of Alagam Peruma Kulashekara is registered by his uh, Vasudeva Nallur record, dated to the Shakaira 1399 or 1477. According to Gopinath Rao and uh, uh, Sharma, the fact that the king bore also the name of Sri Vallabha and his natal star was Uttara, 
is testified to by another inscription in the Mulasaneshvara temple in Samburva Dagari, issued by his younger brother Arikeshvara in his 34th regnal year, approximately in 1470. This record engraved on the south wall of the Mahamandapa registers not only a case of granting to the Brahmanical community of Vindanur, but it gives also uh, valuable details about the relations within the royal family. Lines three and four of the inscription refer indeed to the granting of a village for the uh, Vedic scholars by the king Sarnaldi, Arikesari uh, uh, Parakrama. Furthermore, the inscription mentioned donation of land by Arikesari's younger brother, or Tambi, uh, Srivalla Badeva, who, according to Gopinata Rao, is identified with Alagam Peruma and Kulashekara, and that Arikeshvara, on the recurrence of the asterism of his elder brother, or Nainara, uh, Srivallaba, arranged additional endowments on behalf of the scholars of Vindanur. In reality, King Srivallaba mentioned in the Sabu, uh, Sambuvadar Guy record is not uh, Alagam Perumal Kulashekara. One of the latter's uh, Tenkashi records uh, registering land granting to the Brahmins of the uh, Kulashekara Chaturvedi Mangalam and dated to the 44th regnal year states that the king's natal nakshatra was uh, Punarvasu, while the Mulasaneshvara record uh, evidenced the sovereign asterism as Uttara. It might be easily concluded that the two were different kings of the Tenkashi line. Uh, so it seems more than probable that this monarch is exactly identical with the Srivallava of the other Sambuva, uh, Samburvadagara inscription, and then brother of Arikesari, Alagamperumal Kulashekara, and Arikeshvara. The last king acceded the throne in 1437, as testified by one of his records, dated to 1468 in his 32nd regnal year. And the same date of anointment as sub-king is given also by his inscription in the Mulastaneshvara temple in the Sambur Vadag uh, Vadagarai. And in absence of available evidence concerning the end of his reign, we can presume that Arikeshvara's rule came to an end shortly after Alagam Perumal Kulashekara's demise in 1477. Further epigraphical evidences, again ignored by the scholarship, seems to suggest the presence of a fifth ruler and brother of Arikesari and the other kings. An unpublished record dated to 1466 in the 43rd regnal year of Tribhuvana Chakravarti Kulutunga Pandya registered a case of land granting to the Rajaguru Maganapati Nainar Vamadevar, a Brahmin uh, native of a village close to Benares. In this inscription, Kulotunga, who, according to the calculations based on the dating of the present record, must have acceded the throne in 1423, referred to an inauguration of an Agrahara by Arikesari, his Annaldi. Given the evidence of the record, we have to conclude that the sovereign was the brother of the founder of the Tenkashi Temple and the others, as you can see in the uh, partial genealogical uh, table. Um, further evidence about the Tenkashi royal family in the 15th and 16th century can be withdrawn not from the inscription, but from a Sanskrit epic poem composed approximately during the same period. The Pandya Kulodaya is an incomplete Maikavya by Mandala Kavi, narrating the origin of the Madurai Pandya kingdom and its development into the Tenkashi line. The poem retells the history of the dynasty right from the mythological beginnings to the times of King Jatilavarman Prakram in Sarga 10, centered on the birth of this king and his younger brother Vira during the reign of King Arikeshvara, the poet referred to Princess Abhiramanaika as the mother of the two uh, future sovereigns and sister of the ruling monarch. Uh, the Mahakavya is the only source mentioning this princess, who, in all certainty, was obviously the sister of Arikesari, Alagam Perumal Kulashekara, Shrivalaba, Kulotunga, and Arikeshvara, but not the other royal princess who mothered the two uh, princess uh, Shrivalaba and Ponin Perumal. As stated by Mandala Kavi, Abhiramanaika was the king's sister, or Arikesari's sister, as you can see in stanza 8 of the 10th Sarga. All countries other than the Pandya, one, will be occupied by your enemy in the form of a sinful king. Hence, be born along with Skanda in the womb of Arikesari's sister. Uh, 
According to the Pandyapuroda, Abhiramanaika gave birth to the future kings Champaka Parakrama and Vira. Uh, Jyotila Varman Parakrama Kula Shekara, 1480 and 1508, ruled in Kashi after the demise of his maternal uncle Arikeshvara, together with his younger brother Vira. According to the familial relations that can be reconstructed from our epigraphical evidence and the Pandya Kulodaya, he was the nephew of Arikesari uh, and the others, and son of Princess Sabira Manaika. The reign of this monarch is attested by 14 unpublished Tamil records from the Dishvanatha Swamin Temple in Tenkashi, recording for the major part uh, cases of land and temple service granting. Among the inscription, record 1618, testifies to the great patronage Jyotila Varman Parakramakula Shekara dedicated to the temple building, like, just like his maternal uncle Ari Kesari. This inscription dated to uh, 1508 uh, involves donation and maintenance of the Alagia Sokanar and the Varanturan Perumal temples built by the sovereign in uh, Kadaya Nallur in the Tirunel Valley district. His brother Vira Pandya, known also as Champaka Parakramavira, was associated to the in 1486. This data is corroborated by the only two available records of this prince. These two inscriptions are found in, in the Nachadishvara temple in Devadanam in the Tiruvallur district and are both dated in 1487 in the second regnal year of Shembaga Parakramavira, which allows them to place the access to the throne in 1486. Based on this evidence, we can overall reconsider the family relation of the Tenkashi royal family in the 15th, 16th century as follows. With uh, Arikesari and his son Suntara, Kulotunga, Alagam Perumal Kulasekara, and his two sons, Alagam Perumal Parakra, Parakrama and Parakrama, and Srivallava, as probably was uh, Parakrama's uh, son, Srivallava, about whom we do not know at the moment anything, Arikeshvara, the first uh, uh, sister, who mothered Jatila Varman Srivallava and Ponin Perumal Vira, and finally this princess Abhiramanaika, the uh, mother of the two Pandya kings who were the heroes of the, uh, the Pandya Kulodaya. So I hope. Um, I try to simplify it as much as uh, possible. I know there are a lot of names. And if Tatiana will allow me, I would like to end my presentation with an ironical quotation by uh, Professor uh, Dubiansky. Sure, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> so thank you very, very much. This is nice. <laughs> Thank you. This is really a complicated uh, uh, system of relationship. Um, I just got um, hooked to the temple image you had in one of the last slides. Um, do you remember what this? Oh, like you certainly know what this temple is. Uh, according to the image I found, it was this temple built by uh, Parakramakula Shekara. This. Uh, um, Varanturan Perumal Temple in Kadayana Lur. Kadayana Lur. At least it seems so. And in the... uh, like which part of Tamil Nadu is that? It's in the Tiruvallur district or in the northern part of, uh, uh, of Tamil Nadu, as far as I remember. Okay. But with all these names, I have such a huge confusion. Uh, have you been there? Uh, no. I was planning to go before the pandemic started. Okay, this. okay. Uh, I will get the, uh, no, I will remember this name, but um, I was also, you know, like it struck me because uh, if I may, since we have this personal angle uh, coming in all the time, I'll just share one picture because uh, this was um, something striking. So this is one of my father's uh, slides from 1979, probably, and I couldn't attribute that temple and um, when I saw that picture of yours, of course, uh, palm trees uh, are everywhere, but uh, it just might be a similar temple because it has uh, a compact structure. And uh, so. uh, well, this is a lead. Maybe I'll just explore it. Google image search uh, helps a lot. Okay. Um, thank you, David, very much. Uh, any yeah. questions from the audience or?
you may say or raise your hands. Um, well, that is a, a difficult genealogy indeed. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this um, energetic presentation and um, interesting information. Uh, I will stop recording once again.